Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to return to Germany once again and we're going to revisit one of the really quite famous breweries from over there. One of the oldest breweries in the world in fact. So for this one we're going to go return to Kelheim which is on the Danube River and we're doing another review from Klosterbrauerei Weltenberg. So we're having a taste today of the Weltenberg Kloster Barock Dunkel. As the name suggests this one is a Bayerische style Dunkel or a Munich style Dunkel, however you want to term it. It comes in at 4.7% and if you've watched the channel before you will know that this is a style of beer that I really really love. When it comes to German traditional beers I absolutely love Doppelbox, I love the German Dunkels as well and I can enjoy um, a really nice Helles. And Rauch beers of course are one of my other favourite styles when it comes to German beer as well. My friend Peter over at the Clueless Drinker he also reviews a lot of these uh, traditional German style beers and it was really him that got me back into actually looking at these once again so do make sure you check out his channel I'll put the link in the video description below but it's been about three years actually since I last reviewed a Weltenberger beer. I think the last one was actually their Oktoberfest beer and before that I've reviewed the Assambach as well which was a lovely lovely beer. As I say I really love the German Doppelbox but certainly looking forward to this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting of course just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website linked to my other reviews that I've done from close to Brauerei Weltenberg before. No doubt I will add some more in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the German beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. And do in particular let me know about some other uh, Doppelbox and Dunkels that you guys would like to see me review in fact because as I say this is a style of beer that I really really love. So anyway on to close to Brauerei Weltenberg then, on to my brewery notes. So as, of, as you've probably gathered actually the brewery is attached to the Weltenberg Monastery which is on the Danube River near the town of Kelheim. It's almost right in the middle of Regensburg where Peter that I mentioned before used to live and Ingolstadt which is of course the home of Audi in uh, Bavaria. I believe it's in the northern part of Bavaria if I'm remembering correctly or the kind of central part. But the brewery have a disputed claim with Weinstefan of being the oldest Abbey brewery in the world. Now the, the dispute is a little bit kind of um, interesting because Weinstefan was kind of secularised and they're, and they're uh, the possessions of the abbey were actually taken by the state government so they haven't been continuously operated by the monks whereas on the other hand Weltenberg have so technically these guys are the oldest uh, abbey brewery in the world because they've been continuously run as an abbey brewery in fact but Weinstefan are the oldest continuously operated um, brewery in the world if that makes sense so they're both the oldest breweries in the world but in a very kind of slightly different way there's only about 10 years between them actually but the part of the Danube where the abbey is located is known to have been home to a Roman military garrison in around 45 AD which was called Fort Hoofningen and uh, the monastery was founded in accordance with the rules of St Columba into the year 617 by Irish and Scottish monks. Good to see my Celtic brethren getting in with the uh, influence and the alcoholism and things like that but this was namely Eustatius and Agulus of the Lexul but in the year 800 they converted it to a Benedictine monastery. So the monks left the monastery at the beginning of the 10th century out of fear of the nomadic finno uric peoples who had laid waste to Italy, Bavaria, Saxony and Schwabia. I believe that's the the Hungarians technically, the finno Europe peoples, it's Finland, Estonia and Hungary are the main ones today so I believe that it's probably what has now become Hungary that those people came from. But later though in 932 the monastery became associated with the bishopdom of Regensburg and it was repopulated by members of the St Emirams Abbey which was one of the local abbeys of course. But the monastery brewery was founded in 1050 and in 1191 the abbey church was consecrated. In the 15th century the abbey suffered due to the way it was run but the reform was introduced modelled on that observed at the Castle Abbey and they began to thrive once again. Between 1546 and 1547 the Weltenberg Monastery was sacked when war broke out in southern Germany between the Emperor Karl V and a Protestant alliance but the monastery was also sacked several times during the Thirty Years War which was 1618 to 1648. You know that war was the one that just absolutely ravaged Europe but it was strongly guided by Abbot Matthias Abilene and the monastery was also a member of the Bavarian Benedictine Congregation founded by the Pope Innocent XI in the year 1684. 
1734. Between 1713 and 1743, Abbot Marcus Backel built many new breweries in the Veltenberg Monastery. The famous Baroque Church of St George was built by the Assam brothers between 1716 and 1739. That is, of course, who they named their Doppelbock after. And in 1803, the monastery was dissolved as a result of secularisation. But in 1858, Veltenberg, St Boniface Abbey Munich and the Andex Abbey were responded by Pope Pius IX. The Veltenberg Abbey became a full monastery once again in 1913, just before the outbreak of the First World War, and in 2006 the monastery underwent significant work to protect it from flooding from the Danube River, of course, and today the monastery is home to around 14 monks, and it's been led by Abbot Thomas Maria Freihardt for the last couple of years. So, really interesting um, history with these guys. It's been very, very turbulent, but you have to say it is really cool when you think about this uh, this brewery and the monastery in particular it is really cool to see how they survive and how they're resurrected and uh, and all of these kind of things but yeah really um interesting brewery this one they do some really awesome beers and hopefully i can get out to kelheim and have a little look at the abbey and uh, visit their restaurant and things like that that would be a really really cool thing to do at one point because i have visited weinstefan and uh, freising so hopefully i can go up to regensburg with peter again and uh, have a little look at kelheim that would be a really really cool trip so i'm going to talk to them and see if we can arrange that but a really interesting brewery this one like I said just to list the other beers for you they've got this guy here the Baroque Dunkel uh, on the list they also have the Assambok which you've seen me review before the Anno 1050 the Dunkel's Radler Natterzug beer which is the unfiltered one the Baroque Hell the Urtip Hell Hefeweiss beer Hell Hefeweiss beer Dunkel Weiss beer Alcohol Fry the Pills and also the Winter Traum as well the Winter Dream their Winter Beer um, but as I say they've got a great selection of beers there you're not going to be disappointed by any of the ones you try so uh, you know, have a go at the Veltenberg beers if you get the chance. You're really drinking a piece of history when it comes to this brewery. So yeah, that's all you need to know about the brewery just now. If you want to learn a little bit more, the website and stuff is in the description below and you can have a little look at that for yourself. But there you can see this beer actually won the World Beer Cup at one point. You can see the Abbey is depicted in the artwork there. I'm just checking that you can see that on the um, on the camera and it says on the top here Veltenberg Close to Beer uh, is of the oldest close to brewery in the world founded in 1050 the best uh, and it says the best Dunkel beer in the world so we'll be interested to see um, how that one turns out actually because I've had some really good Dunkels there you can see the Veltenberger bottle cap on this one I'm not sure how the light is doing with that there you go but yeah on the back doesn't really say very much but there you can see as I've told you many a time quite a lot of these beers are protected geographically when it comes to the EU so there you can see the EU symbol for the Bayerische beer for the Bavarian beer uh, the ones from Munich of course do have a slightly different symbol you get the Münchner beer um, but I think yeah they are um, it is all quite nice and of course this one is brew brewed in accordance with the Bavarian Reinheitsgebot from 1516 the purity law where they can only use the four ingredients in beer but let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then nice smoky opening then and we'll get this guy out and into the glass and of course you should drink these beers in the kind of mugs like this I've got my nice half litre mug. This one is a Pilsner Urquell mug, of course, but it does do the same job. But look at that. Lovely, lovely looking beer, this one. There we go. But look at that. One of the things I always love about these Dunkel beers it's just the colour of them. If I hold this up to the light, it is actually quite rubyish. this one. It's got a nice kind of sort of dark reddish copper quality to it. There's a lot of carbonation visible in it. There you can see it going through the glass, but definitely a nice ruby edge. If I hold it up to the light, it does kind of go quite coppery. I'm just checking how well you can see that on the camera there, but it looks absolutely lovely. There's a solid finger of a frothy, I would say light kind of beigey coloured head on that one um, and you can smell some of these lovely brown sugar and biscuit you know it's just come out this beer if I put my fingers behind the glass I'm not sure how well you can see it but this beer is pretty much it is transparent although it is a little bit darker so you can't quite see um, all the way through it but a lovely looking beer this one so let's have a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on yeah so it smells lovely and um, pretty much as you would expect so there's a nice little bit of a, a roasted uh, brown sugar to this one it's got a nice sweet caramel note there's maybe a little touch of treacle to this one it does smell really quite dark in terms of its brown sugar and that's one thing I love about these traditional German beers they've all got their own little kind of niches and things like that and they always lean towards slightly different things but there's a lovely big bit of um 
brown bready quality to this one as well. You can really smell that nice brown bready quality just underpinning this beer. It's almost a little bit woody and nutty as well, probably more woody actually in terms of the aroma, but you can smell that lovely kind of German brown rye bread quality coming out of this beer. You can really smell that form in the backbone of the beer, but as I say, a little bit of caramel on there, a little bit of darker caramel, kind of toasted, a bit of biscuity sweetness as well, which is quite nice. But um, yeah, it kind of has everything you would expect from the Dunkel beer in terms of uh, aroma. There's also a little bit of that nice earthy, kind of noble hop quality coming out. It's a little bit earthy, a little bit grassy. Um, yeah, the noble hops are always really distinctive, and this one gives you a nice... The, the way that the earthiness comes out in this is just a little bit sweet. There's a little bit of a kind of red fruity quality coming out of the beer as well. There's a nice kind of a candied red fruity flavour to... a red fruity aroma to this beer as well. I would say... Yeah, to me, it is a little bit like those little Haribo... Um, Star mix, the little heart shaped sweets, and that's like a sort of candied um, strawberry note, maybe kind of figgy as well, to be honest with you. Um, but as I say, this beer has everything that you'd expect to the Doomco. Overall, for me, the aroma leans a little bit towards the brown sugar kind of thing. It's definitely got a nice little bit of that roasted uh, brown sugar quality to it. So, as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. But let's have a taste of this one then. So, this one is the the Weltenberger Kloster Barock Dunkel from from close to Brauerei Weltenberg near Kelheim in Bavaria in Germany. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, Skull, Prost. Yeah, that's a pretty damn good beer. I have to say that about it right away. Um, you know, one of the things you have to remember, I'm a little bit biased with this style, I really do love it. But for me, that's a really solid dunkel. Yeah, it pretty much has everything that you would want from the style. It's a little bit more bready than I was expecting it to be, to be honest. but. You can feel that nice brown bready quality, that just blankets the middle of your palate there. It's not quite as um, heavy on the brown sugars as I was expecting it to be, to be honest. So yeah, nice brown, nice, uh, brown bready malts there, that blankets the middle of the tongue. You can feel a little bit more of the kind of graininess kind of coming out as you go further and further um, on with this beer, actually. So there's a nice little bit of a caramelly sweetness in the middle of your palate. Um, and as you go further out from that, you start to get a little bit of the, the kind of more grainy, biscuity sweetness to it as well. Um, as you come further forward on the tongue, I would say there's a little bit of a woody note there, but there is graininess pushing its way out of this beer as you kind of go further and further into the aftertaste with it. It's it's definitely this beer is a lot more bready than I was expecting in comparison with the um, in comparison with the aroma actually. But I'll tell you, it is a really nice beer. If you pair this up with a schnitzel and chips. You'd be bang on the money with that. Um, that's one of the things I always loved about um, Germany was having, you know, having a Doppelbock or having a uh, a Dunkel beer and you know enjoying a schnitzel on chips with it. My cousin Ryan and I, we really loved that when we were uh, when we were sitting in Munich with the nice dark beers. But yeah, it's a really it, it's a cracking beer. That there's there's no doubt in my mind. I think your palate takes a little bit of time to kind of adjust to this one because the bready characters, the graininess, as I was saying, there's some of the graininess pushing its way out of this beer, but it really smooths out as you get further and further into the flavour with this one and you do start to get a little bit more of uh, the brown sugars coming out of the beer, but it is definitely, this beer is a lot more bready in things than I was expecting from the aroma. On the hoppy side of things, back corners of the palate, You've definitely got a nice kind of uh, earthiness there. You've got that nice typical German noble earthiness from the beer. As you come further forward, it becomes a little bit more herbal, but then it evolves 
into a more sort of floral um, kind of quality then round the very front curve of the palette that's where you get a little bit of that kind of typical um, lighter grassy sort of thing coming out of this beer. But yeah, I like how everything's kind of um, going together with this one. It does taste um, really quite nice, actually. Every, everything. Uh, this one's all about how the flavours kind of blend together, and it's definitely one of the more bready um, Dunkel beers that you're going to come across, actually. In terms of the fruity side of the things, then, as I always say with these beers, the little oily bubble that you get behind the front curve of your palate, that's where the nice juicy and um, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. So for me with this one... You've got a little bit of a, I would say you've got a little bit of a, a kind of red, sort of candied red fruit to this one. As I always say, those little heart-shaped sweets out of the Haribo Star Mix, but then it evolved to be a little bit more of a kind of um, figgy flavour, to be honest. I would I would say that about this one. The fruity quality in this beer, um, the fruity character rather, isn't really that pronounced at all. This beer really is more about the bread and the way that the bready, can, especially the grainy notes in this, actually interact with the earthy hops. But yeah, overall, it is a really, really good beer that you know that you can't, um, you can't see anything bad about this at all. It's just you know it's it's a traditional German Dunkel. There's not much more you can ask for. I would say overall though, in comparison to some of the other ones, it really does lean a little bit more towards that kind of brown, um, bready side of things. But it works for it, and the way that it's got that slightly stronger grainy character. That builds a good bridge with a slightly earthier, um, hoppy quality that this beer has, and um, it, you, the brown sugars do build up a little bit as you kind of go further and further into this beer. As I say, it's got a little bit of that caramel note in the middle of your palate, and then some of the slightly lighter, almost caramel wafer notes and biscuity flavours start to come out as you move further out towards the sides of the tongue. But some of the woody quality, this beer for me definitely has a little bit of a woody element to it. You can really feel that coming out more and more as your palate adjusts to the beer. But in terms of flavour, nothing you can really complain about. As I say, it just leans a little bit more towards that bready side of things. In terms of the mouthfeel then, definitely a mid-bodied beer. Carbonation is very smooth. It has that typical German Bayerish sort of smoothness to it. Really, really nicely done. Um, Overall, it's a little bit oily. It does have a little bit of that oily quality, which is what you expect of a Dunkel. There's a good little bit of hoppy bitterness to it, but by no means is this beer going to blow your head off in terms of IBUs. It's, it's you know, it must be somewhere around um, sort of. 30-ish, maybe even 40 IBUs, I'd probably say near 30 to be honest with you. And the malt base has, it does get a little bit sweeter as you kind of go f as your mouth sort of adjusts to it a little bit, but overall the malt base for me is quite smooth and there's just a little bit of that juicy kind of red fruit to it. But overall, this beer is all about how the flavours kind of go together. If you like your Dunkel beers bready, then this is one that is uh, going to work for you, I would say. It kinda, this one actually reminds me a little bit of some of the Czech Tamavi beers that I've had. Um, obviously the Czechs have their equivalent of it, the, the Tamavi beer, and it is, I've always found the Czech ones should just be a little bit more bready. This one does remind me of some of the, the Czech ones that I've had, although obviously it is a very old German beer, this, so it'll be the Czechs, I think, taking that from the Germans, but who knows. Um, but yeah, a really nice Dunkel beer, this one. If you like your Dunkel beers bready, then this is one that you definitely uh, want to check out. But once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Close to Barrow Veltenberg. This one was the Veltenberg of Close to Barrow Dunkel. Really, really nice German Dunkel beer that leans a little bit more towards the bready side of things. But until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Check out my social media. Let me know some other German Dunkels that I should review. And I will return to the Close to Barrow Veltenberg at some point in the fairly near future. But the Barrow Dunkel is a really nice beer and you should definitely check it out. So until the next time, it's just now and I will catch you guys very soon. Do let me know some more other Dunkels that you'd like to see me review. Prost.